The Commodore 64 used a fatter double width font than the VIC-20 because the video quality of the early VIC-2s wasn't very good. Therefore they had to make the 64's font fatter than the one on the VIC-20. However, I think this fatter font looks quite nice and there's an easy way of replicating something similar to that on the VIC-20. But uh, rather than loading in a whole new font, rather than doing that, we can actually double the width of the existing font, which is stored in ROM, and then create a new fatter font from that in RAM, uh, which we can then point to. Each character definition is stored in ROM, and for this demonstration we'll base our new fatter font on the uppercase characters stored from location 32768, that's HEP 8000. Uh, because this example is for an, an expanded VIC-20, we'll only use the first 64 characters. So we can see here the letter A and how it's defined. So the VIC uses an 8x8 font as a default for each character definition, and that's stored as a series of 8 bytes, with each byte representing a row of the definition. So we can see with this letter A that the first row of the definition uh, is uh, 24, then 36, 66, 126, and it goes down. And then each character within the character definitions, or the character map, is stored consecutively. So we have the first 8 bytes represents the at character, then the next 8 bytes represents the A, the next 8 bytes represents the B, and so on through the character set. But we're, we're only going to be working with the first 64 characters though. To create the double width font, we get the value of each line of the original font, double it, and then or it with the original value. So this has the effect of doubling each pixel's width in the character definition. So we can see this here. So we're um, on the left hand side we can see the standard VIC-20 character set. So we have the letter A and if we look at the first row it's 24. So that's bits uh, 16 and 8. And if we look at the right hand side we go through and double that value. So 24 times 2 is 48. And then if we or that 48 with the 24, then we'll come with 56. Effectively, oring is superimposing the new value upon the old, as far as the bit pattern is concerned. So we see that we have uh, 32, 16 and 8 as the bits making up 56 of the new double width character. So we go through each row of the character definition and then that will double the width of that character. And then all we need to do then is go through each character definition of the whole, well, of the 64 characters that we want to do in this case, and, and then copy those into RAM. And then once we've stored them in RAM, we can use location 36869, uh, which is location uh, 9005 hex, to set the character map address to our location in RAM. Before I show how to automate this process in code, I just want to quickly prove what I was saying about the locations, about how the characters are stored in ROM. So I mentioned that the uppercase character set is stored from location 32768, and then the first character is the at character, but the A character that I was showing before is the next character. So if we skip the first eight bytes, so 32768 plus eight is 32. 776, and there we are, we have the uh, the row as uh, 24, stored as 24. And if I look at the next row, 36, and the next one for good measure, great. So we had 24, 36, 66. If we flick back to have a quick look at the standard VIC-20 character and how it's defined, and there we are, we can see 24, 36, 66. So just to prove how this is stored in memory. Well, now it's time to put this all into code. So the program I'm going to demonstrate will use the first 64 characters of the uppercase character set uh, to create a double width font. Uh, because we're only altering the first 64 characters, it means that the reverse character, uh, the reverse characters aren't defined as usual. So the cursor won't blink properly, for example, uh, nor will the characters above, 65, uh, above 63 be defined properly. So if we have a look at the uh, assembly routine which I've created, so. Um, it uh, creates a double width font from location uh, 7168 in RAM, so that's where it's going to store the new double width font. And, and this location is going to be used because we're using a custom character set with 64 entries. So 64 entries times 8 rows is uh, 512, and then we want to start below 
the start of screen memory. So uh, 7680 is the start of screen memory on an unexpanded VIC. And then if we uh, take 512 away from that, we end up with 7168. Uh, so here's the code in any case. So we're going to go through, uh, now to make the loop easy, we're going to do the, the two pages of the, of the uh, ROM and of the new RAM location separately. So we can see on the loop label that we're loading from 8000, uh, which is the first location in ROM. And then a bit further down, uh, we can see that we're loading from location 8100. Uh, so those are the two pages that we're interested in to make the 64 characters. And then in the same way, we're using uh, above 8100, we're using 1C00, which is uh, location 7168. And we're also using the next page, a bit further down, uh, where it says STA1D00. So we can do the two pages, and therefore it just makes it really easy to do the loop. And then the process we're doing, so if we go back up to the loop line, so we're loading in the row of a character definition, so LDA8000, Y, and then Y will be the index into that and then we'll get into that page and then we're going to transfer it to X uh, because we're going to use that again in a minute then we're going to do an uh, arithmetic left shift uh, which is effectively just timesing it by two and then we're going to store that in a temporary location bring back our uh, A that we stored before so the original character definition and then we're going to all that with the values that we stored in temp and then once we've done that process so that's the process of timesing it by two oring it and then we're going to store it as the new character in the RAM. And that's it, nice and simple. So we do that for the two pages, and then we loop round, and then we return back once that's all done. Well, I've assembled the program, uh, assembled the source code to machine code, basing that on location 02A1. Uh, 02A1, which is a decimal 673, is a handy location to put uh, little machine code routines like this into. It's, it's um, it, well, it's defined as the uh, the user indirect vector area, uh, so it can be used for this or for other storage. And this is a good location to put little machine code routines in. So uh, the machine code routine is held in the data statements from line 50 in this program. And I just want to go through the program from the start. So line 10, we're seeing that we're poking 28 into 52 and location 56. And that's because location 51, 52 points to the bottom of basic active strings and hence the top of available free space. So on an unexpanded system it defaults to 7680 which is hex 1E00. Uh, we want to change that to hex 1C00 which is location 7168 which is where we're going to start uh, storing our character RAM from, uh, our character map from. So all we need to do is change the page, hence the reason we're only changing location 52. So we'll change that to 28, which is hex 1C. And then the same with location 55, 56. We want to change the page to 1C00, again 7168 decimal. And that location is the, it points to the end of basic memory. And then we'll have command CLR, which clears the program variables, and then it registers the bottom of basic active strings and the end of basic memory. And then we're loading our machine code routine into memory. So we're loading it from location uh, 673 to 704. And then we go through each one of the uh, bytes in the data statement and loading that uh, and storing that in memory, poking it into memory. And then finally, uh, well, not quite finally, we'll run that routine, uh, that routine with sys673. And then finally, we'll poke. So we'll poke 36869 with the value 255. So location 36869 controls the location of the character set. And by setting it to 255, it sets the character map to location 7168. Uh, and that's done. So nice and simple. If we run the program now to demonstrate that this works, so we can see the thin font now, and then we run it, and there we are, we have the fat font. You'll also notice though that the flashing cursor has disappeared, and that's because there's no definition for uh, for the reverse of the space, which is the uh, how the flashing character works. We'll also notice that if we put it into lowercase, 
there we are, it's not defined properly and that's because we only altered the sir, 64 characters and then after that it's sort of potluck what's in memory, well we know what's in memory because it's the, co the continuing locations but in any case uh, there's nothing there that, uh, that we want to be for the lowercase. And that's it. So nice simple routine. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing that. Uh, have a look at the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website where you can see the code in proper and a better explanation. There's also a link to uh, Mapping the Vic which explains about uh, setting the character set location. Mapping the Vic is a fantastic book if you ever manage to get hold of it but if you don't there's a link to it on archive.org which is a really good reproduction of it. And, um, and do please subscribe to the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel. Have a look at some of our other videos and some of our other articles on the Tech Tinkering website. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again.